Today's lesson looks at changing rural landscapes in the UK and hopefully you've spent the first few minutes of the lesson just creating a spider diagram thinking about some of the advantages of living in rural areas. So hopefully some of the ideas you've come up with um, might have included some of the following. Peace and quiet, more space or maybe having a garden. If you live in a city it might be the case that you're living in a flat. In general crime rates are much lower, less pollution in rural areas, increased amounts of wildlife, um, things that enable you to be able to do that now, things such as online shopping, uh, obviously you can get shopping delivered to you so you don't need to live near shops and services, you can get everything pretty much delivered to your doorstep nowadays. I put at the bottom here bigger and cheaper housing stock, maybe this doesn't apply as much in the north of England where it tends to be the case that when you move out of a city housing becomes more expensive, but in big European capitals such as uh, London or Paris, wherever it might be, what you tend to find is that as you move away from the city, housing does get cheaper and it gets bigger. And so a lot of people tend to, or if they have a family living down in London, they might move out of the city and go and live somewhere on the edge where they can get bigger housing for a cheaper price. Obviously now with coronavirus, a lot more people are working from home. Um, so there's less pressure to be living near the job um, that maybe you would have previously or historically needed to travel to every day in and out of an office. Rural landscapes are an important part of our, the UK economy. Farming is obviously a traditional industry that historically would have employed a lot of people. Nowadays, rural areas tend to be very important for tourism. They're important sites in terms of conservation of wildlife, whether that's plants or animals. They're in, they contain some really important parts of our heritage that could be old historical buildings and stately homes. They're home to lots of people. The rural areas are full of villages and little hamlets, um, which are big communities. And I put at the bottom there, carbon store. In near Sheffield, we have huge areas of peatland, which is a really important store of carbon. And they're, it's, they're really important in terms of preserving those rural areas uh, to be able to help us re our, reach our target to reduce our global carbon emissions. We're going to look at two different areas today where they both experience rural change. On the left-hand side in the picture, you can see uh, an area of the Outer Hebrides, which is a chain of islands off the northwest coast of Scotland. On the right hand side here is South Cambridgeshire. Uh, both very different landscapes um, and both are changing in very different ways. On the left hand side in the Outer Hebrides, you've got an area that is very, very remote. It's very far away from anywhere. It's very difficult to get to. It's not close to any major urban areas at all. So the nearest urban areas will be places like Inverness. It's got very limited transport links. Obviously you need to be able to have to get a ferry to get onto the islands and they're very far removed from any major road networks. You don't have motorways connecting up there. They're also quite extreme. So these are positioned right on the very northwest corner of the UK. So you're going to get lots of storm systems coming across. You're going to get very cold weather, very windy weather. So they're going to be difficult places to live. And in general, these areas have got very poor connectivity. So that in terms of things like 4G and broadband is not particularly great. In contrast to that, on the right hand side is um, Cambridgeshire. So this area is very close to lots of large urban areas. So Cambridge and obviously quite close to London as well. It's got really good transport links. So it's got train links going through it, lots of roads. The climate is very mild. So you don't get the same sort of extremes that you would do in the Northwest um, up in Scotland. In general, there's still quite a large um, traditional farming economy. So it does produce a lot of um, fruit and vegetables. And unlike the Outer Hebrides, it's got good connectivity. So it's got good broadband, good links in terms of mobile coverage and things like that. So unsurprisingly, South Cambridgeshire is the area which is seeing quite a large amounts of growth. And the Outer Hebrides is an area which is seeing 
population decline. So firstly, you're going to look at an area of population growth. So this is going to look at South Cambridgeshire. Um, and in the, the last 10 years, the growth has been mainly down to people moving there from Cambridge and London, but also migration from the European Union. You can see here in 2013, registration of national insurance numbers from migrant workers increased by 25%. So it's a big increase in terms of people moving there. And I want you to try and think about why that is and why might that have changed recently in relation to Brexit. So it could be the case that those patterns of change are not the same as what they were previously. We're seeing a big increase in the proportion of people aged 65% or over and you, you can see in that bullet point there it says by 2031 they think that that will be 29% of the local population and this is mainly due to life expectancy increasing so people are living much longer and so we're seeing that as a much higher percentage of the population and you can see the estimated increase in population there is an increase from 150,000 to 182,000 by 2031 and that's quite a sizable increase and that's obviously going to have impacts. More recently, COVID-19, coronavirus has obviously had a big impact on all our lives and I want you to think a bit about how that may have impacted on population movements recently. Um, if you've been reading the news you might have seen that there's been quite a lot of stuff about people looking to move out of urban areas because they felt quite trapped in when it was locked down and a lot of people are trying to get themselves out of London or get themselves out of Cambridge and go and live in rural areas where they can have more space. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned before, things like work from home um, have had a big impact on the fact that people no longer feel the need to be traveling into an office every day. And so coronavirus, again, is going to have a big impact on where people are living. I mentioned before about the fact that the movement of mig migrant workers into places like Cambridgeshire has changed quite a lot and that is mainly down to Brexit. Um, obviously with um, Brexit happening we're going to see that it's a bit trickier maybe for workers to move in and out of the UK and a lot of the people that would come and pick the fruit in the summer months in, on British farms would come from EU countries and you can see these news articles from 2019 and this shows us where fruit is actually rotting on the trees now because people are they're not they're not getting as many people to come into the area to be able to pick the fruit and so I, you just need to be able to recognize the fact that these population movements are changing and when you're doing an activity the next activity i'm going to ask you to do i want you just to have brexit in the back of your mind about how that might affect these population movements are obviously having social and economic challenges so we're seeing an increase in the amount of people commuting so traveling to and from places that's going to increase traffic commuters also tend to shop in the places where they work so if you're traveling from rural cambridgeshire into cambridge you'll probably do your shopping in tesco in cambridge rather than doing in your local farm shop in the village so it can have a bit of a negative impact when you're when people are moving around so much housing developments obviously going to affect the local area you're going to be building on areas of greenland Housing prices are increasing, which is um, a problem for everybody as it becomes more expensive, unless you're selling your house. Um, but it does put a big pressure on people who've maybe lived in the area their whole lives when they're seeing house prices increase so much. Migrants obviously put pressure on local services, so that could be medical services or schools. Um, it can also create conflict and discrimination aimed at the migrants, so we'll have seen a lot of negative news stories uh, aimed at Eastern European migrants who've moved to the UK and some of this although it it is true there are problems and issues with lots of migrants coming into the UK it also is slightly misrepresented in the news at times um, and it's important we fully understand what the issues are with these because obviously they bring a lot of positives to our country as well through doing vital jobs and also paying taxes. So you're going to pause the video here and you're going to have a go at the tasks on the board. So the other area we're going to look at is an area of population decline. We've already outlined where the Outer Hebrides are. 
It's a chain of 65 islands. Um, it's got a population of about 25,000 people. So you can see the population is much smaller um, than the population of South Cambridgeshire. And although there's been a small increase in population in recent years, the decline has been over 50% since the 1900s. So in 1901, the population was over 40,000 people. One of the reasons for this is down to limited opportunities. So young people are choosing to move away and those limited opportunities might be things such as no access to higher education. It might be no access to the types of jobs that they want to do. The types of jobs might be quite limited in the area. And also young people want to go and live in towns and cities. And so a lot of people will be moving away to go and seek the opportunities that those towns and cities provide and to obviously be surrounded by other people of their age. Again, I mentioned coronavirus. Um, we might have found recently that people have been choosing to move to these areas. So it might be the case that in the middle of a pandemic, the appeal of a house in the Outer Hebrides seems quite inviting. I know sometimes when I've been sort of stuck at home thinking about living in places like the Outer Hebrides does seem quite appealing. You need to think about the social and economic impacts of these people leaving the area. Obviously, with the out movement of people you're going to end up with not enough children to attend schools and schools are going to start closing down you're losing your working age population so you're losing the people who are um, going to be working as your postal delivery people or people who are doctors and nurses in the island communities if they're moving away the the the, the, the whole structure of society starts to fall to pieces you might end up with an aging population so a lot of people needing care and looking after a lack of jobs. Um, there's been a big decline in the fishing industry, which traditionally um, did provide a lot of jobs for people. And then finally, tourism. Now, tourism has become a lot more popular. Scotland's become somewhere that people are really keen to travel to. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, but the problem is that with such a big increase in people traveling, um, what we're finding is that there isn't the infrastructure to be able to support the number of people that visit the island. And that could be things like waste disposable, access to medical facilities, toilets, you know, all of these vital services. And when the pressure becomes too much on them, we might find that it's going to impact quite badly on local communities. So again, you're going to pause the video here and have a go at doing these activities. It should be fairly straightforward. To finish off with then, you've got this question I want you to have a look at. It's a six mark question uh, and it says, contrast the economic challenges associated with areas of population growth and decline. So the question wants you to specifically focus on the economic challenges and you need to think about how they are affecting an area of growth in Cambridgeshire. So you need to focus in on one particular area and really explain that. And then also an area of decline now remember, you need to focus on the economic challenges there.